Hi, my name is Jason Ma, and this is my video for CMU's 15 112 term project. My project is a simulation of an augmented reality based off of the movements of a quadcopter. Now, what this means is that the simulation will allow for the user to remotely control a quadcopter whose physical movements will then be relayed and tracked onto a laptop. The entire quadcopter is built and coded by me along with some of the stabilization algorithms. So I've just started up and connected the quad to the computer. The quad is ready to fly, but first we'll display the various options displayed on the menu. In the bottom right corner, there's a text input field, which you'll use to put in your name. The reason why we put in our name is so that it'll know when to load, the, load and save the high scores, which we'll discuss later on in the video. We press H for help, which will load the controls. So WSDA will move forwards, backwards, right, and left. And similarly, the arrow keys will rotate right, left, up, or down. 8 and 9 are used to arm and disarm the copter, which will essentially turn on and off the motors. For now, the motors are turned off. You always press B to return back to the menu. Next, we'll press L to load the high scores, which is why we inputted the name in the first place. So under Jason, right now, we only have one time saved. And then I'll further demonstrate this load high scores function once we successfully tested a demo. Additionally, the times will also be saved in decreasing order where the best time will be on top. Third, we press G to change skins, which will load a series of different skins you can use for your quadcopter. So if you want a Boeing 2707 or you press 2, for R2D2, you press 3, and etc. For this video, we'll simply be using the fighter. Third, you see the throttle status right here, which essentially tells us where the quadcopter is in relation to the simulation. So, so for right now, we can obviously see that it's landed. Next, on the bottom left-hand corner, you can see WASD. So this will show us what keys are being pressed down. And as you can see, the quad isn't really moving right now because in reality, it's also not moving. And last, on the top right hand of the screen, it shows a time, which will run the timer once we cross the finish line. So for now, we will be, I'll be doing a voiceover because the quadcopter is really loud. And so now I've just started the takeoff, and I'm going to remove the block. So as you can see, the movement of the quadcopter in the simulation is completely mirrored by the motion of the physical quadcopter in reality um, and the turning all the angular rotations are measured by a gyroscope and accelerometer that's located on the quadcopter itself and it's constantly relaying information to the laptop so over here it gets a little bit laggy because the quadcopter stumbled a bit and right now for my implementation is using Wi-Fi, so the data that's constantly constantly being transmitted to the quadcopter isn't super stable. So some future implementations I plan on changing would be to use maybe radio control or perhaps Bluetooth. So for the end part of the video, as you can see, once I finish once I cross the finish line, I get prompted what I like to save the time. Also notice that the throttle status tells us when it's completely landed. So I just hit yes to save and L to load the high scores. And as you might notice, the times are arranged in descending order from best to worst. And they're also sorted by the name. Now you might also notice that there's three times saved under JSON. And the only reason for that is simply because I messed up one of the flight tests. Anyways, that's all my project and thank you for watching.